the very same aircraft he was flying in over the beaches of Normandy on this day 50 years ago. He was supporting the 5,000 ships and 10,000 aircraft whose job it was to land 157,000 men in the most massive and most complicated invasion of wartime. And the part we had to play, which was just to patrol up and down the beaches, and it was planned that there was never less than 1,000 fighters over the beaches at any one time. That were stooging up and down, dodging each other a lot of the time. Commanding Blue Section from 485 Squadron on that flight, Johnny made the first D-Day strike on a German aircraft. They obviously dropped his bomb somewhere on the Omaha or Utah beaches. They were snorting up the starboard engine out of it and the aeroplane rolled over and crashed into a roadway. Minutes later, with the rest of his Kiwi Blue team, they fell to second German plane. I think it's wrong to single out individuals. It was a team effort, everything was a team effort, Army, Navy, Air Force. The one regret I have is that the whole of the blue section who flew with me on D-Day are not here in England at this commemoration. All four of us are still alive. But I certainly never ever gave any thought that the aeroplane that I flew would also survive in the miraculous way that it has. I just assumed the aeroplane would have been broken up for scrap like so many others were after the war, melted down to make saucepans. It's very nice to be reunited with an old aeroplane. A lot of people get carried away about vintage aircraft, but I'm not one of them. Flying an aeroplane is exciting, but not anything like as emotionally stimulating as meeting my old ground crew, Knuckle Wright and Vic Strange in particular. They were the two that used to strap me in the aeroplane and keep look after me. Vic and Ron are also the ones who made sure his aircraft engine never let him down and they were always there to help a mate into the cockpit when he'd had too much to drink the night before. The next morning they woke me up to go and leave the show. I got out of bed, old Gunk, remember Gunk? Yes. He held the lantern while I got my flying boots on, the pants on, and I said, hey, I'm not flying anymore, I'm on rest. And he said, sorry, I'll go and wake Mr Lee. I said, no, don't wake him. I said, he was a bloody sight more pissed than I was. Leave him alone. <laughs> so off you went. Lovely feeling to be so close, you know. Wasn't it, Rowan? You trusted each other, you know. We trusted each other implicitly, you know. Um, and they shared each other's joys, shared each other's sorrows. We're one big happy family. <laughs> I think I only gave you fellas an order once. I said, get me in this cockpit twice. Yeah, once yeah. get me in it, once get me out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'd yeah. had too much the night before. That was your trouble. I walked straight there. <laughs> so far from home, they especially relied on each other during the bad times. The worst part was when we lost one, when yeah, one of our boys didn't come when back. You sort of send your pilot yeah, off. So it used to be choked. Yeah. Ten, you know. ten squadrons of, of twelve. Yeah, yeah. You see them come back, you see ten land. You hang around waiting for the others, you know, and then they don't come. That's when it's... So it was to the tranquil villages of southern England that Johnny and his boys retreated for relief between days spent literally dicing with death. But at times, especially for the fighter pilots, the pubs and companionship just weren't enough. Operational fatigue, I suppose, is the correct name for it all. Started, dived in and made one attack and was going in for another attack. I was flat flying all over the place and suddenly had this insane urge to just rip the canopy open and step over the side. They had a name for it. They called it the twitch. It was merely the outward and visible signs of the fact that you're getting run down, worn out, operationally tired. And if you stayed at it long enough, it was inevitable that every pilot would, would get the twitch. You couldn't avoid it to, unless you made a, a lump of concrete. So everybody copped it sooner or later, some sooner rather than later. It's true, the funny sort of see, twitches like this, or as, as a, as a, if the sphincter muscle, either that or the sphincter muscle could let go, which is much, much more embarrassing effects. Um, I've got a feeling I've done this before. Boy, oh boy, looks just the same, except we used to be around the bar, used to be a little different, I think. 
All the Air Force blokes used to home in on this one for some reason. There was only, there was only standing room in, the, in this place. The perfect spot to gather and put aside for a time the ever-present danger in their lives. It wasn't exactly a joke amongst us, but it was a recognised thing that you made a joke of it. How else could you deal with it? Because nobody knew when you're going to get that touch on the shoulder, but you never feel. Never cried about a mate that went west. Or he just put his money on the bar and drink it. Oh, boy. First for a hell of a long time in this pub. And it was right here in this bar that Johnny first noticed a striking young woman in the uniform of a WAF. She was his future wife, Vicky, after whom he named his plane. She had these beautiful brown eyes. I used to tell her I could jump into her eyes and drown. Swim around in there and drown. She said, oh, that'd be silly. They had close to 40 years together before Vicky died. It must be hard for her because... She but in wartime, no one fun. really knew how much time they'd had together. It was a fact that a lot of Lotharios dashing around, quick contests here and conquests here and there. And it was, it was so with many people. But as far as I was concerned, when I met Vicky, she was the only woman I wanted in my life. The only woman I ever wanted in my life from there on. And that was how it worked out. Just the same, she worried about me. I know she did. I used to tell her, look, I always come back. I always come back. I came back yesterday, I've come back today, I will, I'll come back tomorrow. Because I knew I was going to survive the wars. The elderly Scots lady, when I was four years old, she said, when you get older, you're going to fly in the air. It's going to be danger all around you, but you won't be hurt. You'll never be hurt. And I believed her. It's on this airfield where Johnny was stationed that he pays his silent tribute to those men who flew from here and never made it back. I trained with a great bunch of fellows, young, young men around my own age, some of them quite a bit older. But it was a fact of life that as time went by, so many of them lost their lives or were killed or taken prisoner. Respect and admiration. That certainly existed between people who were close on squadrons. It's the way I still think of them. My greatest friends and I admire them and respect them. If you want to call that love, we'll call it love. Don't mind. As the war is recreated here at the RAF D-Day air show, there's a chance to admire the swift and deadly grace of the Spitfire again. But as for war... War is a, is a stupid pastime, it really is. I'm talking about the human cost, the human terms. The men that go away and the women and the children are left behind. That's, 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 the, that's the real cost of war. A lot of people have asked me, would you do it all again? And my answer is, if the sun under the same circumstances, it's precisely, I'd do it precisely the same thing again. Make, make the same mistakes, it's all over again, but I'd do it all again. There's the old wartime logbook, which has all the D-Day detail in it. I won't open it over here in the breeze, but I'd like you to have that. Keep with the airplane. For as long as I can humanly manage. I'm sure they, I know that. And staying with the logbook are Johnny's wartime medals, including his decoration, the Distinguished Flying Cross, They'll all remain in England with the Spitfire. Well, I've often thought back and I actually walked away without looking back over my shoulder. I just kept on going. I went and said goodbye to the boys and just beat it.